be fun paying this off. Just got done live streaming the unboxing of the new studio display and Mac Studio, and I think I'm just going to dive in and get started with setting everything up. This is gonna be a pretty rough video, especially because I'm gonna rely on my iPhone 13 Pro to do a lot of this vlogging. So we're gonna go through this and you're gonna come along with me as we figure out how to take my Mac Pro, 2013 Mac Pro out of the mix as well as my 4K Dell display and get everything moved over here to the live stream setup so we can put the Mac Studio in and the studio display. Let's do it. So I just wanna quickly give you an overview of my desk. This is a custom built desk made out of lumber from Home Depot and steel pipe that I picked up from Menards. You can see I've got four displays, two Thunderbolt displays on the far right and left, a Dell display in the middle, that's a 4K display, and another 1080 Dell display up top. There's monitor arms mounting all of those monitors. This is some older footage of my desk setup. I've updated my iPads, but for the most part, this represents what I have going on, but I need to swap out that center display for a studio display. All right, so the first thing we need to do is get the couch pulled away from the edit bay and start unplugging everything from the Mac Pro. Let's get the Mac Pro out of the equation and then we'll tackle this center 4K Dell display after that. You guys, I desperately need to get rid of this old couch. I've had it for as long as I lived in Omaha and it is sad and tired and needs to go. All right, so here we have the Mac Pro in with three RAID arrays. An uh, eight terabyte SSD, HDMI matrix, tons of cabling, including my boom arm for my Rode NTG2 when I'm recording voiceovers and stuff. All kinds of connections going on with this Mac Pro and it's gonna be interesting to try to get all of this same stuff connected to the Mac Studio. Can it be done? We will find out. Let's get this Mac Pro out of here. So the Mac Pro was always down under my desk and I think I'm gonna to try to have this up on my desk because of the two USB ports in the front, as well as the SD card slot in the front. I have an SD card reader already underslung on my desk. I wanna get rid of that. And I have a USB-A hub that I will think about getting rid of because of just trying to preserve the amount of ports I have connected here. So let's see what we can do with having the Mac Studio up on top of the desk. So we're gonna use what's gonna be the first of several Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt 3 adapters one to connect three daisy chain Pegasus devices to the back of the Mac Studio, and then uh, two more to connect my Thunderbolt displays to the back of the Mac Studio, which will leave one port open for the new studio display to be connected and that will max out our four Thunderbolt ports. So I was really happy that the three Pegasus were able to connect to the Mac Studio by daisy chaining. After doing a driver update and a software update to the Promise Utility, all three Pegasus were up and running on the new system. All right, so I think I've got everything but power connected to the Mac Studio. Um, I'm using a USB 3.0 hub to um, connect four total devices across the USB-A 3.0 ports, a hard drive dock, a USB 3.0 dock that I have underslung under my front of my desk, an eight terabyte drive that I use to back up my YouTube archive, and then my audio mixer connected to the Mac Studio as well. I'm gonna start taking this monitor off and getting the Mac Studio monitor on, and uh, then we'll power up the Mac Studio and think about also powering on the Mac Pro to transfer some information across to the Mac Studio. So I have this quad monitor mount from Fully. I'm only using two of the arms but this studio display is gonna go great with the Visa mount adapter. You can see how it looks here with the studio display, pretty quick and easy to install just down to get it all level and set the way I want to. That's my preview monitor above my studio monitor so I can use the AV output feature in Final Cut Pro, which works really great and I enjoy using it with other collaborators in the edit bay with me. That satisfying feeling of pulling the sticker off and getting those two Thunderbolt displays all leveled off and cleaned up so I can have my install fresh, looking good, and ready to go for some serious YouTube content creation. I couldn't daisy chain the Thunderbolt display, so I had to use an Apple Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt 3 adapter, which is $50 each for one of those. But luckily the Thunderbolt displays work no problem and we're good to go. Okay, so 
That's not the Mac Studio starting up. That's the Mac Pro because I'm going to transfer some of the data. I'm still going to do a clean install of the Mac Studio, but documents and downloads folder, all that kind of stuff, I'm going to transfer over. I know some of that comes through on iCloud, but there's a few things I want to make sure transfer over from the Mac Pro, including some applications. So here we go. First time turning on the new Mac Studio. There it is. Startup chime. Let's go around front, see what happens. We have liftoff. Let's see if these displays, ooh, they do work. Wow. For those of you who are curious, I've got two iPads on my desk. One on the left controls all of the sound levels for my system, Safari, Final Cut, all of the apps. And then the other one runs Stream Deck Mobile, so I can do shortcuts with Final Cut Pro at the touch of a button. It's a really great tool. I may need to connect a mouse manually because my trackpad is currently connected to my Mac Pro, so stand by. It's going to be an old fashioned mouse. So one thing I can do is connect my new Magic Keyboard. So I've got the Magic Keyboard with Touch ID, $150 for this thing. And I'm also going to use my original Magic Trackpad too, not the updated one that has the more rounded corners in this new configuration. All right, so let's get this set up. So I'm technically doing a clean install of the operating system but I am porting over some of the data from my 2013 Mac Pro just to make getting started a little bit easier. Some of the things like documents, the way my doc appears, applications, that stuff can port over pretty easily without any trouble. <laughs> I've got my Mac Pro hooked up here to this monitor laying on its back because it doesn't have a stand. All right, so one thing I love about Migration Assistant is you can connect one Mac to another using Ethernet over Wi-Fi, or you can do it over Thunderbolt. With this connection, I had to go from Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt 4 using Apple's $50 Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt 3 adapter. I know, a lot of Thunderbolt talk going on there. But Migration Assistant is a great way to port over some of the basic user data from an older computer to a newer computer. You guys have no idea how relieved I was to see that the Mac Studio had an SD card slot. This SD card reader that I have in here by StarTech with the front door falling off, mounted underneath, all looking old and outdated. I could not wait to get rid of that thing. Here I am, the anal retentive control freak that you all know and love, using a level and protective gloves to properly balance and level my Thunderbolt displays so that they were perfectly adjusted on either side of my brand new studio display. Overkill, I know, but for the first time, I had them perfectly level. Woo! I'm recording this over again because of using my iPhone on this uh, holder thing made it stop recording, so that's awesome. But I'm at the edit bay here. I've got the Mac Studio all set up. I still have some tidying up to do in the back and I'll get to that in a little bit. I've got the Magic Keyboard with Touch ID implemented as well. And of course, I've got the Visa Mount Studio split. <sighs> and of course, I've got the Visa Mount Studio display all set up and leveled and the screens are clean and everything's been dusted. It allowed me to do a little spring cleaning here with this new Mac Studio install. I wanna say thank you to all of you for being with me on this journey from watching the Apple event uh, during my live stream watch party to rooting me on uh, with the purchase of the Mac Studio on social media and then being there, of course, for the unboxing. Now I get to share with all of you um, this Mac Studio installation. So that being said, make sure that you like and subscribe. I have another video coming up where I'm gonna overhaul my live stream setup to integrate my 2013 Mac Pro so I can run Ecamm Live even better with my live streaming because that 2013 15 inch Retina MacBook Pro has been a struggling with Ecamm Live. So definitely gonna have some good content there with showing how I take some of the equipment from over here and implement it over there into my live stream setup. So yeah, I think uh, this has been a success. This upgrade and swap out has been awesome. And I cannot wait to start chopping some broccoli with this M1 Max Mac Studio and let you guys know, hopefully in the coming weeks, what a general review video of that and the display. And then maybe two, three, four months from now, we'll do another review video just to go over all the things that I have liked and maybe not liked about the Mac Studio. And I want to cut to some good B-roll from an actual camera. 
of the Mac Studio and my setup because you've been enduring my iPhone audio and iPhone footage for this whole video. I thought I needed to get you something a little bit more mm, cinematic. Now, some of the great B-roll montage people are gonna do theirs much better than me, but uh, I'm gonna bust out the slider and uh, my cinema lenses and see what we can do to get some good footage, not only of the Mac Studio front and back, but some of the other peripherals I have set up the displays and the edit bay in general because I really do love this setup and I think some of you might be interested to see it. Thanks everyone for watching. Until the next one, I'll see y'all soon. And remember, keep chopping that broccoli.